Ah, oh, all right, man. Well, listen, let's just jump right to it, man. Let's talk about the game. Mario! And we are talking Luigi's Mansion, released in September of 2001 as a launch title on the Gross. Nintendo GameCube. Now, we've talked about this before, but we're going to say it again. GameCube was just a weird console for many reasons. Yes. Uh, the disc sizes were like a third of the size. They were, <laughs> the, mi- they were the mini discs. Uh, the console Sorry. itself was the fr- weird. The, the phrase that I said, the disc size was small. That sounded it, funny. Yeah. It's a tiny disc. Um, a little little disc syndrome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so the console itself was was shaped like a cube, and you had a handle so you could carry it around. Like it was just weird. And not to mention, its launch game was not a Mario game. It was the first time. Well, I believe is the first time Nintendo did not launch a Mario title, except I for Game so. Boy. The only other one was Game Boy. They launched Tetris as their launch title. Yeah. But we're not counting that. As far as like consoles, this was the first time they launched a console with without Mario. I, and did they have what about the Wii? The Wii, well, I guess that's true. The Wii, but but that came after this. I'm saying this was the first time. Oh, at the time, yes. This yeah, because the Nintendo it was still, sw- yeah. still kind of close to it, though. I mean, it's as close as you can get to a Mario game. Well, yeah, because Mario is technically in the game. He's just yeah. You could have just flip flops. You could have the damsel in destroy. But it's not like a traditional. And I think when I got it back in the day, not knowing anything about it, I'd never seen any gameplay videos. I was disappointed because I was hoping for a Mario sixty four type of gameplay. That's what I was expecting because yeah. of you know Mario sixty four. When you first got the game, did first off, did you get it with your system or did yes, you get it? I, at, okay. I got it with the system. So I it was did. like. Yeah, I got three games at launch. I got Luigi's Mansion. Yep. Madden 02. I, I assume it was Madden 02 because if it came out in 01. Mm-hmm. And then I believe Ray Lewis was on the I think Ray Lewis was on the cover. Or it was Dante Culpepper. I just remember a purple jersey. And did Smash, was Smash a release uh, launch date? No, I think Smash, it was Smash Melee. That came out a little later. All right, so then my two launch games were Luigi's Mansion and Madden. Okay, and then I bought a used GameCube at GameStop like yep. several years later, but I did buy with it. I bought Luigi's Mansion because it was like uh, on a sale or whatever. So I got that, and then I got Batman Vengeance. I think it was called. It was. A- you know what's funny? I just got that. So at uh, the day after my GameCube, yeah, uh, estate sale stuff. My buddy Mike, shout out to Mike at work. He listens to the podcast. Um, he texts me and he goes, dude, everything's fifty percent off. I'm like, this this can't be. This yeah. this was the estate sale to end all estate sales. It was not like your traditional estate sale where you go like, oh, and they have like their China closet and all their doilies on sale. This was like this guy worked at Toys R Us. Oh, legitimately. Wow. Yeah. So he had everything was still in like the shipping box. Hmm. So nice. he had a whole basement full of games, and I went back and I saw Batman Vengeance on yep. PS2. And it was five bucks. I go, well, Mark Hamill's doing Joker and Kevin Conroy's doing Batman. So, yeah, for five bucks, why not? I will say it's probably worth gameplay wise about a dollar fifty. It's not great, um, really. Well, and now that we've been spoiled by like Batman Arkham and stuff, yeah, it's yeah. really not good. Um, but for me at the time, it was like again, it was, this was the well, it was the second console I bought for myself, but the first one that I kept for myself and didn't share mm-hmm. with anyone. Uh, and I bought the game, and I just felt like, oh yeah, this was you know, I was I was I had a job at the time because I was I guess I would have been in high school, so you know, it was my own legit money that I used, not birthday money, like money that I earned from a paycheck, you know. Yep. So I had a lot of pride in my GameCube, and I wish I had held on to it because. Uh, a lot of those games are stuck on the GameCube at this point. Now, slowly but surely, they're coming out. But, like, for example, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door just got released on the Switch, and I'm very excited to finally play that for the first time. Um, but, yeah, I kind of really wish I would held on to uh, to my GameCube. Yeah, GameCube games are super expensive. Yep, because, again, they're, they're hard to emulate, and they're not being re-released. So I think GameCube could be summed up as... When you're a kid, you have that awkward, fugly teen years. Yeah. When you're transitioning from, you know, childhood to adulthood. I think this is what Nintendo, this was Nintendo's fugly years. Because the N64 was trying to be competitive. And it yeah. was competitive. P- N64 was competitive with the market then. Yep. GameCube didn't know what it wanted to be. It didn't know if it wanted to be a little trendy or family friendly. When the Wii came out, they knew we need to go in a different direction of Sony and Microsoft. Yep. 
It was very clear at that point. Whereas, yes, yeah, this was the system where they did not know yet. Yeah, I would say yeah, because the PlayStation One, when it came out, like I mean, I, I think it beat Nintendo that in that generation as far as you know overall sales and everything like that. And then yeah, by the time this generation of PS2, GameCube, uh, Xbox, it was a cl- distant third. PS2 um, almost killed. It did kill Sega. Yes, and the PS2, I think, nearly killed Nintendo. I think the only reason Nintendo it did hold on is because their handheld game was so strong. Like as yeah. far as like they make so much money off their handhelds, and no one's ever touched Nintendo from a handheld perspective. Game Gear came close, not even close. Game Gear was the closest, and it wasn't close. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. And PSP um, was a flash in the pan. Yeah, and the PS Vita, remember that? Like yeah. that was even less of a you know like. And and I've heard great things. Like people people that owned a Vita love it. Like it's, I had it's, a PSP for a cup of coffee. And I I got one on because it. you got one, and I I loved it. But then I'm it like, was great. I just. Uh, you know, like, and now I have my Switch and I only ever play in handheld, so you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, that's, but, uh, so I think that's what kept Nintendo afloat during the GameCube era because, yeah, it certainly wasn't the GameCube sales, which again is, is proving why now all these games are so rare because no one bought them, so they didn't make as many of them, and, you know, so. Uh, but let's talk Luigi's Mansion, man. That's the whole point of, of today's episode. So you got it at launch, and what was your kind of initial reception? Like I said, for me, I was kind of dis- at, and it was it didn't take long before I got into it. But like I was disappointed that it didn't control like a Mario game. But how did you feel about it? I freaking loved it. Yeah, like from the get go, because I didn't like Mario sixty four. Okay, I I like Mario going left to right. Yep, that's so- what I grew up with. And that's the way I liked it. So this was that in between. Yeah, it was it was okay. that in between game. Also at this time, this is two thousand one. There's no Ghostbuster game. I was gonna say the, this was the best Ghostbusters game ever for many years. This was the best Ghostbusters game of this of these of this generation of consoles. Yeah. To the point where I would even argue, so we, we already did the episode on Ghostbusters, the video game from 2009. They stole a lot of that gameplay mechanic from this, I feel, as far as like the catching the ghost and like waving it back and forth until it yeah. goes down the tree. You know what I mean? Like that was from this game. I'm, I'm convinced that they, they took it. They had to take this as inspiration. Yeah, I you know think I mean? it, it was a it was a great game. Um, and at the time, there was nothing with Ghostbusters. It was, the franchise was completely dormant. So this yes. was the closest thing you got. But it had the Nintendo charm to it. You know, you had the returning... I mean, obviously, Luigi's in it. But Toad, Mario is in it. King Boo is in it. They name drop Bowser in it. Yeah. So it had... It, it was a new franchise, but it still had the familiar faces. So it was not diving into something new. It was just kind of dipping your toe in something new. Yeah, it wasn't like a total spinoff because it had all of the characters. It just was from a different perspective. So why don't you go, why don't you go ahead and explain, for those who haven't played Luigi's Mansion, what's the, what's the premise of this game? So the gist is that Luigi wins a mansion, not Publisher Clearinghouse, but wins a mansion, but it's a haunted mansion. It just kind of popped up. And Professor E. Glad, who's a weird-looking little dude with a snaggletooth, helps Luigi capture these ghosts because they're in in this mansion and you you have your basic ghosts like your basic booze but then you have like each room has a ghost yep and each one's like a little bit of a puzzle solving aspect to it so that was really like a thing. scavenger hunt like you're hunting for the ghost basically yeah so there are some that are like the booze are just get them yep. go get them Ray you know that's <laughs> that's really about it but the other, the, the ghosts specific to each room, you, there's a little bit of, like you said, scavenger hunts, backtracking, um, puzzle solving, and then there's an actual, like, boss for each level of the mansion. Yep. So Mario goes in first. He gets kidnapped. You find out it's King Boo. Uh, Toad's there. He helps you save your game. And you go around, you bust ghosts because busting makes you feel good. Yeah, and then it's when well, it's funny too because like what's different about this other than the fact that it's a very different gameplay style, but like Luigi's got like a health meter, which is kind of unique. I mean, Mario I guess had hearts in Mario sixty four, so it's not that different. Yeah, but he had health, and then like you collect coins and like paper money in this game. You do, and pearls, and and gem what do you do with it? Is it just for score? Because I don't remember, again. I, it's been so long since I it's tried for I, score, and at yeah. the end, the 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 mansion appearance is based on how much money you've accumulated okay. throughout the game. And the way you get more money, like I said, the pearls and stuff like that, you know, when you go to zap a ghost with your polter, poltergeist, poltergeist. 3000. Poltergust, excuse me, thank you. 
uh, 3000, which is a giant vacuum cleaner, which I think he's used in Smash Brothers. Yes. The long Each ghost has a health bar of 100, so the longer you hang on to him or her, the bigger the pearls that pop out. So essentially, ah, the okay. goal is to get the big pearls if you hang on to them longer. So yep. and it's pretty simple. Again, it, it's a fairly simple game in terms of gameplay, but there is there are those moments, and I still had them replaying the game. I've played this game since I owned it and then got rid of it and then got it again. I think I've played this game three times in my life from beginning to end. Okay. Including the one the most recent one. And I'm like, where do I go? Like I couldn't I couldn't quite remember. It was like I was totally stumped. Yeah. But I just had to sit there and think. I'm like, okay. Mm, oh, all right. You, you have to think. Well, and so not too long ago, I played and beat Luigi's Mansion 3. And that was the first one I'd ever beaten, you know, start to finish. Yeah. And so I kind of was like, all right, cool. Like, I know in that one, like, sometimes you got to, like, think uh, think outside the box as far as, okay, what can this vacuum do? What can it suck up or whatever? So, like, there were certain rooms in, in the first, in this one, Luigi's Mansion 1, where, like, oh, I got to open the curtain by using the vacuum cleaner. So stuff like that. I already had that mindset, but it was because I had already played another Luigi's Mansion game. I felt like number three ramped up the puzzles solving. Yes, I, th and that's what I noticed, too, is this one was definitely very basic. I will say one thing I appreciated is that, just like the third one, this one had a really comprehensive map system. Yes, um, the map was very good, very easy. And did you notice that it's like a it's called a Game Boy Horror when you pull it up? Yes, the, yes, the that Game Boy cool. Horror is great. Um, and oh, and the professor can uh, message you and vi uh, voice chat and video uh, chat with you for the yep. Game Boy Horror, foreshadowing for... Uh, Smartphones. Absolutely, it did. You know what I loved? Okay, so speaking of Professor E. Gad, do you remember? He's actually, this is not his first appearance in Mar in the Mario franchise. Did you know that? Or I guess technically it is, but then he shows up in another Mario game on the GameCube. Did you know that? No, what does he show up on? He's the guy who invented Mario's spraying water thing in Mario Sunshine. I didn't like Mario Sunshine. Oh, well, and that's, yeah, because it was the 3D Mario game. But yeah, yeah. so he, he he's he's a recurring character, believe it or not. Really? Um, you know, and so, and of course he shows up in all the other Luigi's Mansion games as well. And he's, I love him. He's terrific. Um, so, all right. This game is, it's not a horror game, obviously, but it's also kind of spooky. Like, I, okay. When this game came out, you would have been in your teenage years, right? Mm -hmm. Did this game scare you as a kid or no? No, it didn't scare me, but there's a moment. There's a couple of moments where the ghosts pop out. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's not like the uh, the infamous man bat jump scare in Arkham Knight, which literally has a go, <laughs> oh, shit. And, and you never, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never. And then they do it again, actually, because I'm playing that in between. And I just had the second, I completely yeah. forgot about the second jump scare in Arkham Knight. Where Joker mocks Man Bat and he does it? Yes. I'm like, woo, okay. I need a second. Like, I forgot yeah. Joker does a jump scare with that. Yeah. And Joker mocks. He goes, ah, oh, the look on your face. It's kind of like, yeah, you yeah, got me. You got but me. But there's nothing like that. There's nothing really scary in it. No. There's not a massive jump scare, but if you're going around and you're trying to find the ghost, they, it's not a menacing sound. Actually, no. I would say the most menacing sound in the entire game is when you boot up and goes, Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah. That's the most yes. menacing sound in the entire game. It, it basically, it's the soundtrack of like a kid's Halloween party. Like you you could play this soundtrack at a kid's Halloween party and it would just be like, yeah, that makes sense. Who um, wanted house? It could be but, called. <laughs> now, I, one thing, so one thing I noticed is you, I know there's another game that this really reminded me of that did come out before this on the PS1. Did you ever play the first Resident Evil on PS1? I did not, but okay. I can understand the tank controls. Well, the tank controls, the fact that obviously it's in a haunted house, just like yep. you know the first Resident Evil, but also even a little detail like when you go to open a door, it goes to a close-up of you opening the door, Yes, which is right out of Resident Evil. So I'm like, they had to have taken some inspiration from that too. I thought the cutscene of Luigi opening the door was, it, it blew my mind back in yeah. the day. It, it was well, great. It looked it really does, good. Yeah, I mean, it, it still looked good. It's I was good. I was planted on my laptop, you know. Sorry, um, and just to just to test it out, you know, get a feel for it again, and and it looks and uh, it was looking kind of clunky on there because it wasn't running very well. But even then, I'm like, yeah, this looks pretty good. Like, you know, for a 22 year old game on yeah, pretty mediocre. Let's be honest, man. The hardware itself is pretty mediocre, especially compared to the other offerings at the time, as far as Xbox yes. and PS2. 
You know, yeah. it's definitely the weakest of the three. And, a lot, you know, that, and there's a lot of late stage GameCube games, and we're not going to talk about them today, but like, like the, some of the wrestling games on there look amazing. Yeah, yeah they do. For being, you know, GameCube games. Um, but I love the, yeah, I love the, the, the way this game looked. I love the, the feel of it. Um, I was going to say something about like just talking about how it's kind of that perfect blend of like puzzle and horror and yes. and it's but it's not scary. But I would it, say yeah, I would say spooky, not horror. I guess that's what yeah, it's a, it's a spooky game. There's a, it's yeah. a spook. I have a few games that I own now that are I would consider spooky actually. So like that's yeah. we'll, we'll we'll make that a separate genre from uh from horror. Yeah, this is like a fun game if you if you have kids to play at Halloween time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! It's a, That's the, it's it's a great uh, October first rolls around. This is a good game to put on, hundred percent. And in fact, I think I did that with Luigi's Mansion Three with my kids. Was that was mm -hmm. like our every October I try to play like a spooky game if I can because I have a few now, and so like just for them to watch me play. And that mm -hmm. was like the first one that that kicked off that trend for me. Um, one thing I will say I wasn't a fan of in this game, and I can't remember if you could change it in the later titles, but I did not like the controls for the flashlight and the vacuum being inverted. Yeah, I I'm not sure if you could. I when I turned it on again for this playthrough, I'm like, can I change this? But I eventually got used to it. I and, and I guess if I played long enough, I probably would because it just it, it, I'm I'm definitely I'm the guy that if I have the opportunity, I will switch the controls to non inverted because that's just what I'm used to. So like when I was trying, I was like, why can't I move the vacuum up? And it's because I was hitting up and which just kept aiming it toward the floor. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, whoops. Let me let me try yeah. that again. So. I didn't get very far in this last playthrough. I know, like I said, the story is you just go through the mansion. I will say, based on the map, it didn't look to be a lot of rooms. Is this a, How long is this game to beat? I feel like it didn't take that long. Probably, and for upload, the YouTube upload for this is going to be just the, uh, the not the bosses, but just the each ghost in the rooms, just going to each one, because there's a lot of walking around. Yeah. A lot of back, there is some parts where there's a lot of backtracking, too. Okay. Um, trying to get health also. You know, use the mirrors to j jump from place to place, place yep. to place, or from, you know, a part of the mansion to the beginning, the main uh, lobby area, which for a paranormal investigator is kind of cool because this mirrors are supposed to be portals or gateways. So I, oh, okay. as an adult, I, I'm like, oh, OK, I kind of like that. You see a lot um, of the details that you might have missed. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was pretty cool. Also, you can make Luigi take a selfie. Oh, I holds. see. I I yeah. didn't, I didn't. Oh, that's awesome. You know what I do love? I love that Luigi has a dedicated button just to scream out for Mario. 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 I like when he screams it though. Well, that is just so you know. Like Mario. You have not heard the sound effect I'm planning to use for the transition to talk about the game, but oh. I, I may have thrown that one in there with a couple other things. I thought so, it was going to be the key sound. I Well, I thought about that, <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? I feel like a more iconic sound for this game is him screaming on Mario, so I had, yes. to, had to throw that in there. So anyway, yep. when, you, if, when you go back and listen to this afterwards, you'll hear it. So Nice. <laughs> um so what else? Because again, I didn't play it too much. What else? I mean, we talked about well, you how have the You have the ghosts, obviously, in each room. Right. And some of them are kind of simple and straightforward. Some of them are just move the curtain to the left and, oh, it's a breeze. Um, but there are some callbacks to older games. Okay. And I feel like the N64 didn't want to. Like, it was oh, as far as like, acknowledging? Because it was too soon. Yeah, mm, you figure that was the third generation of Nintendo systems. I guess. But, like, I... Mm. Because I, I agree, but at the same time, are they acknowledging Mario 64 stuff in this, or are they acknowledging, like, NES and Super Nintendo N in this? NES. 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 See, yeah. so they're going back. Because I feel like they don't like to go back to, like, their previous generation necessarily to acknowledge stuff in, like, Easter eggs. Maybe they do now. I just haven't noticed that. You, I mean, honestly, usually now it's still, like, NES and Super Nintendo for the most part. But um, So what are some of the things that they do in this game that kind of go back? Well, what really jumped out to me, and I remember it, it, this really hit a uh, nostalgia memory, is about mm, a little under halfway through the game, you go into a room, and it's it's all full of musical instruments. Okay. The way to activate the ghost is you have to tap... The piano. Then you have to tap okay. the violin and tap this and tap that. And as you're doing it, it's another instrument that's going towards the original Mario theme. Oh, okay. Which is something you did not hear on the N64. 
Oh no, back then, like yeah, it was a novel concept to hear like NES music, and nowadays, yeah. like that's like, of course, that's what they do. Like they remix it for all their modern games anyway. At this but point. this was the first time you heard. This is way before YouTube, way before people were doing remixes online. So to hear a updated version, a nice modern instrumental version of the original Mario Brothers theme on your GameCube, where the N sixty four was like, nope, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that era. Like, yeah, this is N sixty four. To hear that, it's like, oh, okay. And I remember just like not even moving and just listening to the music because it was a nostalgia. Yeah, a nostalgia just... trip. Yep. And the ghost is playing the piano. And you walk up to her, and you have to. She asks you a question. Can you basically can you name this tune? And she plays the tunes from a tune that you have to name. Is it water or is it sky from Mario Brothers Three? Oh, okay. so you you have to know your Mario trivia. Yeah. Um, if you get it wrong, she disappears. You come back in, you got to answer it again. It's pretty simple, but it's just like wow. Okay, that really surprised me. And then also the. The villain was not Bowser, you know. Yeah. That I think that's the one thing everybody can kind of complain about Mario. It's like, okay, I got it's Bowser, it's Bowser, it's Bowser, always it's Bowser. Bowser. It's always Bowser. For Mario Two, had the 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 Toad dude. Yeah, who by the way has never come back since then. Uh, no, you, you, King Wart or whatever his yeah. name was. And then this is King Boo. Yeah. This is only Kings. So the fact that it wasn't Bowser is like, yay! Like something different. Right. And like it was not, but it was a known. It wasn't like they made up a villain for this either. Like, well, I don't know. Was is this the first time you saw King Boo? Or I'm trying to think. I because he had booze. Like that's a, a common whatever. But I, yeah, I mean, I, maybe I don't know if it was the first King Boo. But either way, it was still a character. Yeah, it was the Boo that y'all know or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, because Boo basically kidnaps Mario. Now in, in I remember, was he stuck in a painting in this one, or was yes. that just in... It was, okay. In the first one, he was stuck in a painting. Okay, and so you got to get him out or whatever, just like mm -hmm. just like in the third one, um, which I think that was the big complaint about the third one, is that it felt like it kind of rehashed all these stuff from the first Luigi's Mansion, but like slightly yeah. differently. Um, so, okay, let's let, let's talk about the, the boss battles, because one thing I noticed, yeah, like, again, I only played for about 20 minutes, but there was uh, these, like, portrait ghosts, I guess, that you have to yes. get. Yes, yes. And so those, each one of those has a different means by which you have to like catch them because if you look straight at them, they disappear. You can't get them a lot of times. Yeah, you have to figure out what the the situation is in that room. So as you go on, you get like secondary powers. You get the power to shoot fire from your vacuum, water, and ice. So it's like you might have to light all the candles in the room, and then the ghosts appear. God. Or you, okay. Yeah, you might have to put out the fire on the door to proceed to the next stage or something like that. So, like I said, it's nothing... It wasn't anything groundbreaking then. And it's not anything now that's going to make you sit there and go, oh, gee, I'm not sure what to do next. But, you know, I think that's fine, though. I, I don't think I games agree. have to... Yeah, I think it's fine to have, like, relatively easy puzzle games and still yes. make them enjoyable. You know what I mean? I thought number three took was right on the cusp of, like, this is being annoying now. Yeah. I felt Just like it was all about the puzzle and minimal gameplay, where I felt like Luigi's Mansion 1 is 60-40 towards the actual gameplay. It was a good balance. Yeah. Yes. No. I 100% agree with that. I, and just out of curiosity, because I got, st I basically stopped playing when I got stuck at the baby ghosts and like okay. the, so the way the the, the one or the twins. They were, I think they were they were sitting in crib. I think it was twins. Okay, the twins. So they make like I, weird noises, like doo -doo. yeah. So like yeah. the one thing I noticed when I got in that room was there was like a ball that I could suck up and like shoot around the room. Yeah. But I, for the life of me, could not figure out how to how to spook them to catch them. Do, any any? Do you remember what you need to do for that one? <sighs> I literally just played them like a oh, couple days ago. And you already forgot. And I already forgot. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old. Hey, it's listen, okay. it's like 95 degrees in the room I'm recording right now because my essential air died. Uh, so, summer. Yeah. No, summer. It. It's great. It's, it's yeah. nice and hot, but it's, it's the best. I remember that. I remember that one. Um, I remember the fortune teller, too. We had to go find Mario's dropped items. Yep. That was cool. Um, and she's like totally willing. She's like kind of reminded me of Slimer. Like, I don't mind being in the containment unit. She's like, all right, I helped. I'm ready to go back. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. No problem. Huh. She she was cool. Um, the butler and the, the walk in the hallways, you had to shoot him with the fire. So it was, it was good. 
And yeah. like like you said, I totally agree with you don't need something to be complex to enjoy. There, there sh- This is that in-between game. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing. Is like As far as Mario games, even the easiest Mario games they've made, like, for example, like the Yoshi games, like, they're yeah. easy. Is how my kids love playing those games. I still very much enjoy playing Yoshi games because they're just, they're fun. You know what I mean? It feels good to play them. The controls are perfectly polished. And it's, and in this case, like, it's the most unique thing Nintendo ever did with the mainstream, you know, Mario games. Yes. My one, I, my one gripe about this game is there's not okay. enough health. Okay. And that's fair. Um, I don't think I got far enough into where I was worried about it because early yeah. on it's pretty easy. But so like, yeah, later on, I guess like the ghosts just get more intense or. Yeah. Or if you just make a mistake, it's. Yeah. I, I would always hit the, hit the mirror, go back to the main lobby and then go into the room where you fight the baby in the crib, the first boss battle. Yep. Okay. In that corner, here's Lou's tip. So if you need health quick, go back to the lobby, go back to the uh, room where you fight the baby in the crib, which sounds terrible to say. There there goes our YouTube, <laughs> you know, uh, information or, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and there's a, the biggest, I think the biggest health heart in the entire game is in that room. So even if you're really low on health, all you have to do is go out of the, not out of the room, go out of the entire hallway and then go back in and, the, and that heart will be there again. Okay. So to, I think it's a 50, 50 point health. So yeah, if you need that, but then you got to backtrack. Yeah. And what, well, and that's the thing too. Cause like he doesn't jump, which again, as a kid, like I'm like, what the hell? This is like a Mario game and you can't jump. That's like his core mechanic. Yeah. Especially Luigi. He's the guy that jumps the highest usually. Right. And he doesn't do any of that in this. Um, yeah. And also this is the game where I realized he's kind of a puss. Like, before this, like, you never really had any kind of point of reference. Like, this game, and going forward after this game, every single game, he seems to be, like, the wimp of the group. Like, that's his new personality trait or something. Yeah, well, he wasn't in N60, He wasn't in Mario 64 at all. No, well, he wasn't in there at all, but, like, he was in, like, the other, like, Mario Party and all that stuff. But, like, I'm thinking, like, Luigi, if you play as Luigi in Smash Brothers, he's kind of a wimp. Like, yeah. you know, he's, he's kind of a, a sissy. But, uh, anyway. So, all in all, I mean... Is this one of those games? Like, there's certain games that, you know, nostalgia really wins out as far as having those fond memories. But, like, you, you played it recently. Like, is this a game that's worth going back to replay? Like, I if they were to so. re, if they were to re-release it now again, like they're doing with Luigi's Mansion 2, is it worth buying? I, I think so. I, okay. I still think it's a good game. I did enjoy it more than Luigi's Mansion 3, not just for the nostalgia. I thought it was just a more balanced game with skill and puzzles yep Luigi's Mansion 3 was more on the puzzle side but some folks may like that and that's yeah. great but for me I still like this the best now I will admit the nostalgia is super strong with it right but I can look past that you know yeah. there are certain games like the nostalgia like oh man this is great like Crash Bandicoot 1 you know on PS1 that game I have a great nostalgia for I play and I'm like ugh it's yeah, tough. yeah. This is a little annoying. I really don't have the time or, or a time or energy to really like laser focus. And that's the thing. I feel like some games from back in the past need you need laser focus. Like yes. you have to. Like I'm not talking even contra level stuff. Like that's like you got to have your your couple cup couple, couple cups of coffee or a couple bottles of Mountain Dew. <laughs> and like, all right, man, we're going to do this. <laughs> like, that's yeah. a whole nother level. But just even an average game, if they're older, you got to have your focus. You can't. I feel like there's no such thing as casual gaming prior to in a cartridge. There's no such thing as casual gaming. I don't know. I feel like their N64 had some casual games. No? Yeah. I I feel like really it was just the NES. I mean, Super Nintendo. Super yeah, Nintendo. But- a yeah. little bit, but like NES was like, there's a reason it's still called NES hard. Like that was the console that kicked our asses. Yeah. But it made us who we are today. You know, um, you know what I love about, there's a couple things I forgot to even mention, but I wrote them down is sure. one of the things with, you know, the controls for this game is because the GameCube control, which by the way, I argue, and I think you agree, GameCube is, has one of the best controllers ever. Like I, I, I was, my two favorite controls of all time is just the PlayStation in general. Yeah. They've never really changed it. Nope. And and the GameCube. Yeah. 
It's it's funky looking, but it's it's way better than the N64 Trident design. Oh, yeah, yeah, I hated that. Um, you, but you kind of got the dual joysticks, the dual analog sticks. Finally, you know, if you wanted them, not all games used them. But what I loved is that. Did you notice that in this game, when you use the triggers for the the suction, like they were analog triggers, like depending on how hard you push down on them, it would increase or decrease the suction power of the vacuum. Yeah. And I I thought that was kind of cool. I noticed that. Uh, Mm. And then the other thing I just, I forgot, I made a note of it was I love the fact that Luigi's Mansion hums his own theme song walking around the mansion. Yes. Yes. Like he (laughs) acknowledges he's in a game. (laughs) I, I literally will hum that song sometimes because of this game. Yeah. I, I was playing at this time. I'm like, wow, he's self-aware. He's very self-aware. He's self-aware. He's in a freaking game, and he's humming his own song. Yeah. I Oh, God. Like, here's the thing. I'm not going to, like, get into, like, last week I was kind of, like, in cokehead mode with how excited I was about Punch-Out. I'm, I'm not going to do that for this one. This game is just one of those that, like, you think about it and you smile because it's just a, yes. lov- it's a lovely game. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's, it's. I can't say wholesome because it's all about the ghosts and shit, but like technically it's like it's just a relaxing, wholesome, it's, fun game. It's a fun don't experience. Ghosts, don't ghosts have right the right to die and you know not suck them up again? You would think so. You would don't think they have so. rights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I agree. But, you have I have a very warm feeling with this game, and I didn't really think about that till you mentioned it. Maybe it's the era it came out, because I was in high school. Yeah. Maybe because it was the GameCube and it wasn't this cutting edge. I mean, for the t- I mean, technically it was, but it wasn't like Halo. No, or it wasn't um, God of War. It wasn't any of these intense games. It was a Mario game. Yeah, but it tried something new. It tried something fresh, and it wasn't too far of the beaten path that you didn't no. like. Oh. Well, you know, in one of our Street Fighter episodes, we said, why didn't Street Fighter 3 have a lot of success? Well, they deviated from what they did. They literally took their entire iconic, you know, list of characters and said, yeah, we're keeping two. Yeah. Like, no, that's that's too much of a change. Yeah. This is the example of doing it a completely different genre, obviously. But Luigi's there. Mario's there. Toad's there. King Boo's there. And there's some new characters involved. And... It's, it's just the familiar the right blend. Yeah, yeah, it's not like Luigi got sucked into an alternate reality where like he's in a whole new world with all new characters. And yeah, it's Luigi, but everyone else is no one you've ever seen before. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think a bigger shock was Mario too. Yeah, absolutely, it was. It's like, now, what the at, hell is this? At the time, there was no point of reference though, because no other game really had a sequel. Like there wasn't really many sequels, and a lot of times you think about it. Like, in fact, I'd love to do a, either an episode or a YouTube video on this. But like Nintendo sequels that totally like deviated from the original entirely, like Zelda Two, Mario Two. Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, like all these games like went in a totally different direction. And so I think in the case of Mario 2, it was still a fantastic game just for very different reasons than the original Mario. I think Luigi's Mansion, same thing. It, it's a very different game than we're used to for any 3D Mario game. Uh, but it was very well done. It, it, when Nintendo takes risks and they pay off, they pay off in spades. I'm trying to think of like there and there had there have been games that they they tried and failed miserably with. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I know there are some as far as like first party. Well, even with um, Mario RPG and Paper Mario, those were different Mario games. Yep, but there was still that core. It felt like Mario. Yeah, it wasn't the gameplay, because gameplay was different, obviously, but, you know, there, there was something about it, like, okay, I'm trying something new, but it's not totally unfamiliar. No, and I think, same thing with, like, Mario Party and all the Mario sports games, like, they're obviously their own games, as far as gameplay and genres, but, like, it all feels like part of the Mario universe or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not like they took Mario or Luigi in this case and like I said threw him in another dimension and like it's he's part of this other world but he's an outsider no this is still a Mario thing like you still feel that comfort from that you get from any at this point if you're a fan of the Mario games like you can obviously you can name all the main enemies because they're pretty much the same in every game you can name all the main big like bosses like the themes of levels power ups power ups it's all pretty now that's the other thing in this game this game had no power ups does it other than like upgrading your vacuum yeah, I, the only power-ups are the the fire, ice, and water. 
and then like your health. But like again, yeah. like it's you know. Now I didn't die at all. What happens when you die? Does it just go back to your save point, or do you you don't have yes. lives in this? Do you? No. Okay. It goes back to your save point. That's what I thought. So you have to make sure you save often, mm -hmm. otherwise yep. you're kind of screwed. So. Yep. And there's lots of toads around to save. There it is. Yeah, they're 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 there to help you. Uh, good stuff, man. Uh, well, that was all I had because again, this was not a game that I have as many ties to as you. But anything else you want to cover before we talk about? pop culture in general well i'm excited for number two i'm, I'm yep. interested in what's going to be coming out with it i've never played it i didn't have a 3ds so i mean to have three installments of it, it you know it must have been a, a, a good game maybe not great um i did see the reviews and you know all three games get fairly good reviews yeah um but i will say this is not a not a cheap game it's it's no. not and, and that's been the big controversy with Luigi's Mansion 2 being re-released is it's it's a $60 game. It's a full price game on the Switch and there's not, it's not like a full HD remake where they did everything from the ground up from scratch like some other, like the Crash Bandicoot HD whatever. Those were like basically new games. Yeah. This is basically just like an up version of the 3DS game. Like you'll, you'll look at gameplay footage and be like, eh, yeah, it looks like a 3DS game. Maybe a little smoother, but not much. Yeah. And honestly probably looks on par with a GameCube game as far as graphics go. You know, I which mean, is, that's, I mean, I don't know. As long my, as it plays well. That's my thing, too. Like, people complain about, like, I, there are old games that I would still pay full price for. I, I can't say that for Luigi's Mansion 2 because I've never played it before. But, like, games from back in the day, if they were to, you know, re release, I would absolutely pay full price. You mean like Marvel versus Capcom? Yes, like Marvel versus Capcom, which I'm so excited for that collection. Now, that's actually a bargain because it's only $40, I believe, and yeah. it's going to have like a million games on it. So that's actually like a steal. Yeah, it's going to have a lot of games. Oh, my God. I'm I think excited. it's I think it's at least six. I think so. Um, it's all like the X-Men, Street Fighter, Marvel, Capcom, and then a game that we actually, apparently it's a big deal being released on consoles is the Punisher arcade game. It was never um, released on anything. Well, it was on Sega Genesis, it was, but it was terrible from what oh, I heard. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, having said that, we have one of those arcade consoles upstairs, and the Punisher is one. It's actually, I'm I'm, I'm not proud of saying this, it's my six-year-old's favorite arcade game up there. It's the Punisher game. Dude, he likes the Punisher. That's awesome. Loves the Punisher. I got, like, to the point where he got, like, a Punisher action figure for, like, Christmas or his birthday, and it's one of his favorite action figures. Nice. So, yeah, he knows Punisher. He, like, loves it. It's a very violent game. So, again, judge me all you want to. He's fine, I think. How old is he? He's Well, he started playing it and he was, like, four. Um, wow. Jeez. Yeah. So, and that, and, like, he likes Mortal Kombat, you know, and all that stuff, too. So, okay. I don't know. It's it, You can judge me. It's fine. I've accepted it. I've It is what it is. Um, but, yeah, no, super excited for Luigi's Mansion 2. Uh, I would love it if they did either a collection or just re-release this one on its own as well. I would pay for this one because, again, I want a chance to play it on some reliable hardware because I don't have a GameCube and I wish I did. I um, still don't understand why Nintendo is, like, refusing yeah. to put GameCube games on their streaming service. Unless it's their two, like, the file sizes, because those are obviously beefier than, like, an N64 game. You know what I mean? Car it's the difference in cartridge games and disc games as far as memory and stuff like that. So maybe that's why. I don't know. I mean, how hard could it be to just port it to a game, to a little, the little well, I don't flash know, drive thing? Depends on the code and all. I just, there's a lot of things. I don't know. But uh, hopefully they keep, because they are doing it. They are re-releasing some GameCube games. So hopefully they just keep it going. Now, of course, there, you know, there's rumors of, like, the new Switch successor coming out and so maybe that'll be more of like i tell you what if the switch successor has like gamecube games streaming like included with that like i will upgrade my switch to the new whatever it is yeah i think you know i probably I mean? would too because it'd probably be cheaper these gamecube games are super expensive they are absolutely super expensive so there's got to be a, a more affordable way to play them on on you know reliable hardware uh, all right, well, listen, before we talk about pop culture milestones, we like to share games that uh, maybe uh, make you feel like you're playing the game we're talking about from back in the day. So let's do a little segment called Scratch the Itch. <sighs> and we've kind of already covered them, at least the games I feel Scratch the Itch. It's Luigi's Mansion 2 and Luigi's Mansion 3. Um, or go back and play the Ghostbusters video game that you can get on, on all modern consoles. You know, yeah. Or, like, are there any other ones you could think of that were like, ooh, this is... No, not really. I mean, that it's literally Mario and Ghostbusters combined. It's, yeah. There's not really that much to, to say. No. So if you than, like Luigi's no. Mansion 1, go play Luigi's Mansion 3. It's available on the Nintendo Switch, as will be as of, well, the day after this episode gets released, Luigi's Mansion 2 will be on there as well. So you got yes. two games that'll scratch that itch for you until they decide to port this one onto the Switch as well, which they damn well better, 
I'm, I'm I hope so. Fingers crossed. If I will say, if Luigi's Mansion Two sells well, I think there's a really good chance they'll do it. So, fun fact: the uh, copy I have of Luigi's Mansion is not mine because I got rid of everything. Like most guys my age, I that's want right. The GameCube, get rid of it. Stupid kids system. Yep. Never like shit. Yep. Just totally should have kept that. Oh yeah. So my copy of Luigi's Mansion, my wife got from me from a um, pretty well known video game store in Manhattan. I think COVID killed it though. Unfortunately, ah, yeah. Um, it was called All Connected. There was no spaces. It was called Video Games New York. Okay. Um, actually, one of my favorite wrestlers, AJ Styles, did a uh, YouTube video when he was visiting the Garden for the first time when he went to WWE. And this was him and Xavier Woods, who's a very big gamer, went to Video Games New York and they filmed like them buying stuff. It was like a museum. They had oh, wow. absolutely everything. Like one wrong move because it was so tight. Yep. One wrong move and just hundreds, hundreds of maybe thousands of dollars worth of damage. But oh wow, I digress. My wife got me this for my birthday, which was great. Loved it, but the packaging felt a little weird. Like the cover, I'm like, hmm, this feels, this feels familiar, but I can't put my finger on it. And I open up the bo- the you know the the DVD box, so to speak. Yeah. And I take out the manual. It's great, it's there, but there it is, embedded in the plastic. Blockbuster. Oh, they got a Blockbuster case for it. It's nice. a Blockbuster case. So I'm like, oh, this is even better. It's great. Double the nostalgia. That's beautiful. Yes. Love it. 